welcome back to Rich Bad Creations. It's 2017. Sorry we haven't posted anything sooner, but I had some problems with my phalanges, so I was forced to take a break. But yes, I will make a DIY for the owl in the near future, as some of you have requested. Keep coming with suggestions. Love to hear from you guys. And moving all that along. Today's project is going to be sorting hat chocolate that I will make with some homemade silicone molds and I'll show you how to do it. So let's get started. First of all, you want to start off with a basic hat shape like this. If you're not big of a sculptor, you can skip all the details I'm about to do and just make a simple or simplistic chocolate. But yeah, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn it upside down so I see what I'm doing and I want to line out where the eyes are supposed to be and I'm just going to flip this hat so and do a comparison and there's a, a lot of okay, I'm going to put this back so you can see and this is the hat so far it looks really really nice done perfect <laughs> finished no but you want to go in and really press this inwards and you want to create that hollow look that they or he or that hat has idea you just have to tweak things around and push things in and smooth edges etc etc and after you're done with that on the entire hat it will take forever you can add a that's the wrong one you can add a bow and some patches because he has some patches on himself and it's hard to see but i've tried to add some stitching and some small details as well all right so just continue on and try to smooth out the texture because when you like mold it around it often become really rough this is the beginning of the mold i have another cardboard piece that i will glue on here after i've done another thing first and for those who have made molds before you might wondering why my figure is sticking above and that the walls aren't higher that's because i want to make a thin silicone mold replicating those you have chocolate in so it's easier to pop out so i have to continuously move it around or else it will you'll see when i get there but first of all i just want to attach the figure to the mold this is a scary part because i actually have to melt the bottom part with a lighter so i'm just going to do that first and you want to be really careful because now it's pretty soft so you don't want to squeeze it too hard but you want to make sure that it sticks and i still have a wall open in case i now see that i have to fix some small minor details before i close it shut so after this has cooled down, you want to glue on the last wall and make sure it's completely tight or else the silicone will escape. It's important to use a silicone that is platinum cured, which means it's food safe, but you have to check that thoroughly before you actually do this so you don't poison yourself. Now it's time for the silicone part. This is part A and part B, and I'll mix them soon. I'm just going to tell you quickly that this type of silicone tends to react to a lot of things so you have to be careful not to have it exposed to any of these things and by the time i mix these i have roughly seven minutes before it will harden and with silicone you stir until you think you're done stirring and then you stir a little bit more but remember to be efficient 
And when you pour, you want to pour slowly so you get as much of the bubbles out. So that it doesn't ruin the mold that you, or the sculpture that you have been making. There you go. This is the mold. And as I said, you can go and trim the edges off with a pair of scissors. So my plan now is to actually do some casts in this with plaster and cast up a couple and then make a bigger silica mold so I can do several chocolates at a time but I save the time of sculpting six or a number out of these and you see this edge you don't really want either so I'm just gonna go around the edge and cut that off as well it got a little bit of leakage but that doesn't matter and then it's ready to hopefully pop out easily Once the chocolate is in the mold, you can go ahead and make a box while you wait for it to set. I've gone ahead and made a top cover for the box. Unfortunately, I forgot to film it. I'm so sorry. I won't be doing this again. But uh, I went along as well making the bottom of the box. And this method is the same for the lid. So I'll show it on the lid, but you're just going to repeat it for the bottom as well. So I'm just going to put this to the side and then show the pieces that's going to become the uh, lid. So you have a triangle that will fit, because I measured, it's going to fit six chocolates. And I decide everything out from this piece. So the hat on the top fits on the outside of this triangle and all the sides that are here also matches the sides on the triangle. So what you want to what you want to do is make a design for a edge. I went along and made a design looking like this. It's a little bit complicated. I'll check if I can just add a still photo later on of it. Like ugh, yeah. But you want to take this and sketch it out. So folding this paper, it's just a basic thick cardboard that is brown. I'm just gonna fold it once like this. And make sure the creases are nice and tight. And then you're just gonna fold the little flip like so inwards and then you're gonna flip the other big flap inwards as well like so and for the glue I'll just show you one more time you glue here but you stop before you reach the end here oh, one of my hairs are in the way but yeah and of course this just got empty i'll be back in a second and we are back with another double-sided glue and i'm just going to continue and then glue the flap on the inside and the inside if it's gonna cooperate and then you're just gonna squeeze the sides together this is to make sure you get a neat edge on the top and to thicken up the cardboard and then you're gonna squeeze this one in and squeeze this one in as well. And now we're going to go ahead and glue this flap here. 
on both sides like so. You don't have to glue both sides, but I just want to make sure that it sticks. And then take this point inside here, like a little pocket, and then squeeze them shut. But you can make a squared box, uh, pretty much any shape you want with the system. You're just gonna add different lengths to them. And that is the triangle, like so. And you just wanna make that the edges are really secured so they don't fall apart. Then you want to glue this down to this. And I find it easier just to add glue to this piece. Like so. And then you're just gonna flip it over and align it with the shape. So flip it around and squeeze it tight. So as you can see, it's a little bit ugly on the inside. I actually glued <laughs> across the line, but I have a neat part that I know will fit on the inside. So I'm just gonna add glue on that as well. And try not to glue my own fingers. And then you just add that to the bottom or top or whatever and just squeeze that in neat and tight as well and then make sure not to press it down and then you're just going to align this with the part that is glued to the bottom but if you don't want to have this intricate design you can always just make a design like you know this familiar symbol or something completely else and you can make a squared box whatever and just make this sure that the height is higher than the chocolate so you want to squeeze it that is the finished chocolate box it's pretty simple pretty straightforward and you can go with as much or as little detail as you want and now it's ready to be filled with chocolate this is the finished chocolate box if you liked it, click the like button. If you want to see more projects like this, click the subscribe button. And if you do go ahead and make one of these, be sure to eat them while watching a Harry Potter marathon. And yes, <laughs> I got a green one. So slither into me. Yes. So thank you so much for watching.